cardiologist Martin Ng describes himself as a plumber who keeps people's pipes open and their pumps operating. He inserts stents in blocked arteries to prevent heart attacks. Where we open up the blockage using a balloon and then we deploy a metal scaffold called a stent to hold that artery open. Stents are one of the most common implants in human bodies. But while they do save lives and avoid open heart surgery, stents create their own set of problems. Stents need to be small enough to fit inside a blood vessel, but strong enough to keep it open. And that's why they're made of metal. But that means the body treats it as a foreign invader. Without medication like aspirin to thin the blood, lethal clots collect around the stent itself. The clotting can be catastrophic and lead to sudden and total loss of blood supply to the heart, causing a heart attack that can be fatal. It's something Richard Legg knows all too well. He suffered a massive heart attack just days after a stent implant. With the original heart attack, I didn't have that uh, severe a reaction because it had built up its own little bypasses, but the stent had blocked those bypasses. So when it did block, I just fell over dead. And came back to tell the tale, though. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, the stent has saved your life, but also created almost lethal risk for you. It did, it did, it did, and burn it blocked. This is an angiogram of Richard's heart at the time. The black lines are his coronary arteries. When it's blocked right near the beginning like that, we used to call it the widow maker. It was Martin who implanted the stents in Richard to save his life. With that, you can see that suddenly he's, he's got a whole new blood vessel. That's incredible, Every, everything just opens up again. That's right, this is not subtle. But this needed to be done again a few days later after the stent was blocked by a blood clot. Good to see you, Richard. Richard was lucky. Please take a seat. While stent clots are rare, the risk of dying from one is between 20 and 40 per cent. Much higher than if you were to have a normal kind of heart attack where you didn't have a stent in. You know, this is why it is such a catastrophic thing. You've done well. To reduce this clot risk, Richard has to take strong blood thinners, but they come with serious side effects. I bleed like a stuck pig. I, I bruise easily too. And as the artery wall defends itself against the stent, the resulting scar tissue can block the blood flow again. Wouldn't it just be nice if you put in a stent and really, rather than have it thinking of it as a foreign material, that it could be truly biologically integrated and be regarded as part of the vessel wall. To achieve that dream, medical science and plasma physics are working together. If you want to cloak a stent with biological molecules that trick the human body into accepting a piece of stainless steel as part of a blood vessel, then you need one of these, a plasma activation coating machine. But it's not the kind of plasma that has to do with blood. This is the kind of plasma that runs the sun. Plasma is the fourth state of matter, is what we call it, because it's, it's what occurs after heating a solid to a liquid, then to a gas, and if you continue to heat it further, you start to tear electrons off the molecules and atoms that are in there. The resulting super high energy inside this plasma chamber sparks novel chemical reactions not seen in nature, where the inorganic metal is embedded with the molecules of life. And we're trying to make materials that actually behave like the body, that send the sort of signals that the body needs to do that regeneration that occurs after implantation. Plasma activation primes the stents to be painted with an undercoat of tropoelastin, the foundation for flexible tissues in our body. And this is a molecule that contains segments that are found naturally in the body and that stimulate particular body responses. So in the case of the stents, what we're trying to aim for is a coating that will recruit endothelial cells. 
Those endothelial cells are important as they form the lining of blood vessels and keep them healthy. Making the coating biologically active is one challenge. Making it stick is another. The metal underneath our coating undergoes what's called plastic deformation. It, in some locations it does, you know, bends like this. And the coating has to remain on the stent throughout all of that. Although these new stents are at least 10 years away from being implanted in humans, the labs at Sydney's Heart Research Institute are well advanced in testing if they work. The stents with plasma activated coating, or PAC stents for short, are inserted into plastic loops that simulate arteries. You've done this before, right? Now all we need is a blood donor. We're doing an experiment to compare an ordinary stent with a treated stent and see what effect it has on clotting of the blood. But this is no ordinary blood. It's mine. Nice work. The loops containing the old and new stents are filled with my blood. The aim is to see how they interact with flowing blood, just as they would in a real body. An hour later, the moment of truth has arrived. So, it's the end of the experiment. What's happened to your stents? Uh, so our loops have been uh, rotating uh, at body temperature, 37 degrees for an hour. We've opened the loops and retrieved the stents, and you can see quite clearly here the result. Our pack-coated stents are free of any blood or clot. They're still kind of squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. Uh, in contrast, the stainless steel control stents uh, have blood all through the struts, and you can see the large clots here at the bottom that we found inside the stents. That's a really clear difference. Are these the kind of clots that could kill a person if they were in a stent inside their body? Absolutely. So a clot of that size inside your stent will block off the blood flow straight away. That's a heart attack. How well the new stents work is a compelling example of an innovative partnership between biology and physics that promises medical hope for millions. This is the beauty of translational research. We feel like we're really making a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm.